Hello, everybody. Happy spooky weekend on this Halloween weekend. I'm Jack Childress. That's Richard Ryan Rose. That's Jennifer Amato, and as always, my main man over here, my liege, Angelus Maximus, a.k.a. Angel Ramon. This is the Written and Dead podcast. Guys, unfortunately, this week, our guest has uh, apparently had a scheduling conflict or been abducted by aliens. We're not sure at this point. Still investigating. Once we find out, we'll let you know and hopefully get them rescheduled. So in the meantime, in honor of this most sacred holiday, which is Halloween, we're going to talk about some of our favorite scary books and movies. We can throw them in there, too, if you want to. Thank you. Boys and girls, Rich Ron Rose, how you doing this week? Uh, if I think there better be two of them in a world, be a better place for it. Damn, skippy. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Yep, that's what you get here. Well... This week, we've got Dungeon Dan sitting in to hang out with us. And as everybody knows, he is a comment ninja, much like Tim Brooks. Yes. But instead of commenting in the comments thread, we're going to get to hear his wonderful voice up close. How are you doing today, my man? Doing fine, except I have to follow Richard Rose now and it just blew my whole game. <laughs> you had game? I'm doing yeah, good. Well, I do that. I, well, no, I pretend to have game when I'm on live. <laughs> <laughs> well, since she's already being her snarky, awesome self, always wanting to point a gun at somebody's face, <laughs> mine in particular. Jennifer Amato, my love, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, definitely a lot better than I was last weekend. Uh, Sorry, I wasn't able to make it. I had a, I had a two, three day migraine. It was terrible. So I was not good. No, I was in bed all weekend. But um, yeah, I am hundred percent better now. Um, Sunday it broke. Uh, Sunday evening it broke, and I am back to my old snarky self. Yeah, we'll see about that. Awesome. Now. Well, now um, I was going to say you've got a head growing out of your shoulder. I believe yeah. we yeah. know that what as is Jason that Aston. <laughs> Jason, what's Aston. going on with you? You nut job. Uh, not a whole, tr- not a whole lot. Just uh, trying to stay alive. Uh, no, <laughs> yep. <laughs> she will shoot you. By the way, and uh, I'll be doing a career change here very soon. Yeah. Not, unfortunately, not quite to writing, <laughs> but uh, yeah. definitely getting out of what I do now. So it'll be uh, another law enforcement going to. guy. Well, hey, as y'all say in the oh, Midwest, really? awesome sauce. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And cool beans. Don't do. forget cool beans. Uh, cool beans. Yep. 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 Cool beans. Can't forget that one. Angel freaking Ramon, how are you doing today, my brother? I'm all good, man. We, we had a really wonderful podcast this morning, me and you and Dungeon, and looking forward to having more fun today. That's all I can tell you right now. More, well, more, cool. more anal jokes, hopefully. Probably. Most likely, that's how we're going to go today. But what we're going to focus on, if we can, we're going to try to, is some of our favorite indie horror books, series, novellas, short stories. Stack them up deep. That way, our viewing audience has plenty to go out there and find, to read, to listen to, to consume, to just soak up and keep lifting the indie community. So, I'm going to start with Richard Ryan Rose. What got you into all these books? Not your own writing. Don't care about your writing. You're writing. We know you're writing. What are you a fan of? i tell you what. Probably, yeah, I mentioned that. I read Pet Cemetery back when I was a kid, but uh, when somebody asked me what got me into books, but it's really kind of a bad example. Um, I didn't really start getting into books until I was in my early 40s or so and uh, but I can tell you the the one book that that really kicked it off for me that really had got my wheels turning as far as wanting to write one myself was uh, World War Z from Max Brooks oh yeah one one of the very few books I've ever read from cover to cover I got it for Father's Day years ago and I read that and I'm like oh man there's a whole different world out there you don't see this shit on TV I want to I want to See what else they got, and just kept digging mm-hmm. into different, you know, books and audio books. Listen to those, and it opened up a whole new world for me. Awesome. Now, do you have uh, the audio book world? That's mm-hmm. one that, like, I swear I don't understand why there's such a divide, but I guess it's Ford versus Chevy. 
but you have the readers that are just like, well, I'm not listening to an audiobook because I want to hear the voices in my own head. But then you got the audiobook listeners that are like, yeah, well, I don't need to know how that word was spelled because I can hear what the character sounds like. What was your first audiobook that just really set your sails? Uh, my first audiobook that really got me going was uh, from one of uh, Written Undead's own uh, recent uh, featured authors. She just joined our crew not long ago, Rhiannon Freighter, and it was uh, Last Bastion of the Living. And that really, uh, that really kicked off the audio book thing for me because I was doing a lot of driving at the time. Mm -hmm. Had to pass on the, had to pass time somehow. And then I listened to this book. An incredible story, very unique. Not your run of the mill Walking Dead ripoff. It was definitely a, a very unique zombie, you know, take on on the zombie genre. Uh, highly recommended. Highly recommend that and uh, Last Mission of the Living. And there's actually a first. Uh, book in that series it's not available in audiobook i don't think but i haven't checked that one out yet i didn't even realize last bastion of the living was actually the second in a book series i thought ah. it was the very first one yeah so now what was it about her writing style that caught you well it was just a unique plot because i mean yeah, I've said this a hundred thousand times when we talk about the zombie genre just being saturated with the same tired old tropes. You know, shit hits the fan, world ends as we know it. Going from point A to point B is just fucking tired old story. So um, this one goes about, what, 100, 200 years in the future. Can't remember, it's been a day or two since I listened to it. But it's uh, way off in the future. You've got this last uh, fortified location. And... Uh, it's surrounded by zombies. They, they have this outer ring that they used to use for all their agriculture and everything. So you got these people trapped behind this inner wall and they're like on a steady diet of tofu and, you know, whatever they can, uh, you know, grow there. Uh, outside in the uh, outer ring, somehow the zombies all got inside. So they send a team out there to eradicate the zombies. And the, the unique part about that is they don't just uh, they don't just send a, a team out there with guns a blazing. They transform these uh, this uh, crack team of uh, commandos into something between human and zombie. So basically, the zombies won't attack them because they think they're one of them even though they're standing out there with machine guns and just mowing their asses down. I mean, there's a lot more to the plot than that, but I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but it is definitely a unique uh, science fiction take on the zombie genre. I actually got the idea to download it while I was in an airport. There was huh. a, uh, yeah, a poster at the, one of the bookstores wow. in the, in uh, like Denver airport, I believe. With, uh, well, hell yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, now, Here's my big thing. Uh, you got me hooked on an author. Thank you, you author peddling drug pusher <laughs> ass type <laughs> person. Um, Chris freaking Philbrook. Mm -hmm. Adrian's Undead yeah. Diary. Did you ever mm -hmm. think you'd get so wrapped up into that series? I didn't oh, when dude, I started it. I, I wanted to literally go live in that world just so I could be beside Adrian and hang out with him. And that became one of my favorite series of all time. Like, oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jack's so into it, yeah, he's just frozen. Is, uh, frozen yeah, he, there, uh, he's, he's in thought right now and he's, yeah. you know, he's, he's, pausing, he's pausing for effect. No, he's got just anal leakage. In a little bit. Yeah, anal I, I, froze, I, fro I froze there again. It is. But I, I, yeah, I froze again. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's see if we can make it through this comment. I got hooked on that thing within about the first 10 minutes of listening to the audiobook for it. Like, just blown away by how good it was written, how hilarious it was written. It's one of the funniest things I've ever, you know, listened to or heard. But after I got so deep into the series, I stumbled on to he had let some people write in his universe. Like, separate author, his universe. And I was like, okay. So I checked out this little book, little tiny book, called Locky versus the Apocalypse, which follows this young British lady 
who is straight up Liverpool, out of her mind, psycho chick, running through the city trying to survive, meets a cool military guy, and they continue on doing their thing as a an existential, I guess, part of the Trinity. And that series is written by the great Carl Meadows. These two guys have made zombie apocalypse awesomeness more awesome than it already was. And I know that sounds horrible to say it that way, but whatever, I don't care. <laughs> because I just gush when I talk about these two guys in particular. And I wouldn't have known about uh, Chris Philbrook other than knowing the name had Richard not just been pounding it into my head to listen. <laughs> You know, and so I finally did and was like, oh, my God. Even when we had had uh, when we had Chris Philbrook on the show, I hadn't listened to um, anything yet. I had no idea. Now I am losing my mind over the awesomeness of it. So, guys, seriously, if you love Mark Tufo, go check out Chris mm -hmm. Philbrook. Go check out Carl Meadows. Real quick on a couple comments we got popping in over here. Uh, I came in late. What was the name of the book and author? Uh, I guess for you know the first book, which would have been Rhiannon Freighter. And what was the one you said before that, Rich? Uh, World War Z from Max Brooks. Max right. Brooks. So there you go on that. Almost like a state. That was me. That was me. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. And, Stacey had asked the question previous, and I was just answering her. So. <laughs> so there we go. All right. Well, we're going to move on down the panel line. Dungeon Dan. What Boy. are some of your favorite authors, favorite series, the ones that just got you and tell us freaking why? Well, instead of giving you the whole list, I'll give you a short version. Uh, I went without reading books for quite a while. And when I first got into it and realized that the, they were writing zombie novels, I started off with uh, Stephen Knight. Um, and I, for the life of me, cannot remember the title of the book. I think it was Gathering Dead, uh, where they were trapped in New York. If you guys haven't written in, uh, read any of his books, I think you should. You'd like them. Um, I got into Mark Tufo after that, and I, I'm not promoting. I'm just saying that I love Mark Tufo and um, the Zombie Road series so much that I have le literally read and listened, mostly listened to those books, I don't know. I got a badge. I did it so often. Well, man, you I, said Zombie Road, no Zombie Fallout. That's well, David no, I'm, uh, <laughs> Zombie Fallout. But I also love Zombie Road that much. It's David yeah, Simpson. David, David Simpson. Simpson, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and then I got into Chris uh, Philbrook, and I didn't know who this was. I was at this time, I was just finding titles and reading and seeing if it caught my interest. And then, like, I got sucked into Adrian's Undead uh, Diaries, um, and it's been bouncing around ever since. That's what led me over to Jeff uh, Thompson and his yep. Guardian of the Apocalypse series. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, for once, I'm like, well, you know, doing a zombie thing on ships, that that's terrifying. But how do you write about it to where anybody's going to like it? And I he like does. He Especially a, from yeah. the Coast Guard perspective. He wasn't even yeah. like Marines or Army or Air Force. I know. No, we're going Coast I'm Guard. all like, who the fuck thought a puddle pirate could have done that? Jeff. What? <laughs> what? And, and he makes sure to give you coordinates for, for every chapter. We are yep. specifically it's, located here at blah 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 east I've and yada to, yada west. Right. I've talked to Jeff about this because when you read his first two books, he goes into so much detail that you know uh Richard knows this, he's military. When you get uh get orders, it's about five pages of CC. You know, before you even get to the root of what you're doing, and you have to read through mm -hmm. it because you have to know who the hell else is involved. Um, and he did that in the in the first book to the point where I'm like, I think I'm going to start skipping this. this yeah, I agree <laughs> with you that oh, no, chapter because it's all about y'all froze on me. There we go. Um, <laughs> so I'm all over the place with authors, and I, I want to make a comment, Jack. You're right. When you meet other people and they just keep pounding things. Yep. And you finally like break down going, all right, fine, I'm going to read this. And then you come up with another gem. Jack kept pounding me about Richard Rose. And I'm like, dude, I'm totally into Sasquatch thing, but I don't know if I want to read about it. <laughs> then I start reading about it. I'm like, fuck, here's another series. By the way, he's so <laughs> cruel. He's going to make me wait to December to get the third book. And I'm Sorry. Like, I came in and it's already two books in. <laughs> you know, I hate coming in on the first two books because I'm like, God, now how long am I going to have to wait? 
Dude, I got to admit, I'm the same way. I do kind of, it, it, it drives you nuts when you start a series not realizing the length of said series and they're only three books in and you're like, right. Oh crap. I got to wait. Right. Uh, or they're all like, I think this is going to be the last book. And you're like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I've invested so much time into these characters, even the dead ones. Yep. Um, but no, you get to, you get to meet new authors, you know? Now, yes, you I, do. I'm yep. looking For forward sure. to Jen's new book. I'm kind of upset that she's mm -hmm. so cruel. She's like, I want it to be on my birthday. You know, you could have been born earlier. Yeah. <laughs> could have been. Like February. Could have been, could have been the first of this born, month. <laughs> I was supposed to be born October 23rd. And every October 23rd, my mother sends me a, a happy due date text. <laughs> kind of like a... Uh, a little twat. Uh, thank you, little twat, for holding out another 17, 18 days. <laughs> right. right. Well, so you're just telling us that you were pig headed from the womb. Beginning, yes. From conception. <laughs> yeah. Hey, she's all like, I'm fucking with everybody. Yeah. Like you in the oven too long. You're so, not yep. going to tell me. I got she it. Cooking. She so, had, through she this did, whole thing, that's how I found Angel Ramon, too. I was reading one of his zombie books. Now, at the first, okay, Angel, you're going to hate me for this. I'm going mm -hmm. to narc him out on this. It's not really narking him out. It's narking me out. I'm reading this zombie book, and I keep having to reread a chapter. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Okay. I mean, I'm reading this zombie thing, and all of a sudden, it's like, stop. Why? Hit save. Charge up. I'm like, is he playing a game while he's writing? I couldn't yep. figure it out. So then I, I send I send him an email and he goes, Oh no, uh, I don't, I still can't remember what it is. You know, you put too many Ackermans from all my years in the military. I can't remember shit. Lit so he's all like, Oh, this is a lit RPG. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you know, and he's all like, All right, old man, this is how it goes. I'm writing it as if I'm a game, a, a character in a game. I'm like, fuck's sake. Okay, now it makes sense. <laughs> you have stepped into a new world, Dungeon Dan. You have yeah. Computer. So, <laughs> yes. What happened to Jack? I just, Jason just said he slept his shit out of his computer. Did he pass out? I think he passed okay. out. Something. No, I don't know. Okay. You all froze, and I'm like, "What happened to Jack? Did he pass out and fall over?" No, not yet, not yet. That that'll happen during the padded room. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that you saved some some things for us. It'll only freeze though when he's on his face, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does it to every one of you, and I just kind of sit here and look at that. Me. Jason's first eagle. I remember my first eagle. Good times, good times. Hey, I still got your first eagle. It's hanging out with Jason's first oh. eagle. Look at him. You know what I did with that poster? I've got all kinds of little clips of you guys. Memes are going to be brutal. Got the firing squad. All right. Well, we're gonna move on ahead now. No, no, I'm gonna pull an Aiden. I'm not done. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, he's not done. Go ahead. Move on. <laughs> okay. Well, since he's hanging out hiding in the background, see so if we can move him a little bit closer to the front. Jason asked him, "What are some of the books, movies, and such that have influenced you to just love the horror genre?" Um. Actually, it was a couple when I was a kid. Um, Paul Zendel. He wrote Lock and Reef of Death. I picked him up in the library at school one day, and then just. Like was, this is kind of fucked up, and then and pro progressively went on to just find scarier shit. Even though the one was blatant rip off of Jaws, I, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was, it was just like you know, there wasn't much for me where we were, my school sucked. All right, like I'm just gonna be honest. With <laughs> like as far as horror books, they had Goosebumps, which like, come on, come on, man, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. These ones were like a little more screwed up, and then that progressively got me into. Um, well, when I started buying like the Walking Dead graphic novels and things like that, and it just went from there. It, it started there and kept going. Like I said, Paul Zendel's always got a little spot there. I don't know how if he's still doing anything, but whatever. <laughs> Those were the ones that got me started. Fantastic. It, but now, now you would still recommend even like these old books, like to like the younger generation. Like if you're into horror, go ahead and get oh, these. Absolutely. Or and even like a, like the real young kids who are just like reading above a certain level if they can handle the subject, yeah, by all means. I don't care if this kid's like eight, ten years old if they can handle being scared. Yes, it's a good read. <laughs> well, about to, I guess they're about to find out if they can handle being scared. I mean, yeah. That's mm -hmm. I, by the way, I do not give parenting advice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm right there with you though. I'd be like, hey, kid, read this. 
Exactly. Of course, <laughs> my girls grew up when I was still doing makeup effects, and I had horror movies going all the time. So their mom would yell at me before she left the house going, don't let them watch any of these movies. And then the kids would gang up on me going, come on, Dad, let's watch it. And it, it would always right. be like a, a director's cut or something where, where they haven't really got all the bad stuff out to show <laughs> on the screen. And then I'm like, don't tell your mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, and Jen, Jen knows my, my and sure daughter. And sure enough. Case. <laughs> uh, his daughter is definitely chip off the old block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can uh -oh. see that. Well, speaking of Jeff Romano, of since he's on the chatty chat right now, uh, what are your favorite books and horror movies? Oh, I got into it. Um, I was a young, maybe preteen, early teenager, started reading Dean Coons. Mm. And I went with Dean Classic. because everybody else read Stephen King. <laughs> Yep, right. I was the same way. Right. I was I'm the same way. I go. I, I'm an underdog <clears throat> type of person, and Dean was looked at as an underdog at that time. And um, my, but my personal opinion was, I absolutely, I thought he was way better than Stephen King. So I read everything. Mm -hmm. I was at the library constantly. I read all of his books. I couldn't get my hands on enough. And then when I finally got done reading all of his books, I'm like, well, damn, I'm going to have to find something else now. I started buying his books and keeping his books. And um, I then moved on to, you know, other authors. Um, uh, I think it's Heron, Heron Colbin or something like that. I can't remember. It's like Colbin or something. Um, he did a couple of books that I really enjoyed. He's not a very well known, but he is in like books a million and stuff like that. Um, and then I met Mary who got, oh, that's Jana. Hi, Jana. That's Jana. Yes, Jana, Jana. From the books? <laughs> she is, she is my, my, uh, my muse for my first book. And that's okay. Stacy. That's that is the wonderful <coughs> Stacy Bender who is over there on the wall up there. She's up there on the wall. The whole fan um, club's here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah. So um I started, you know, I, I finally got hooked up with somebody who knew this group, the written undead group. I started reading Angel Ramon. And then I started messaging him and stalking him. And then I started <laughs> <laughs> Which I appreciate that. I That's how she wound up on the show, by the way. It is how I wound up on stalking. the show. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started, um, you know, I started reading. I didn't get the chance to read Mark Tufo, and I still haven't read Mark yet. <gasps> so, I know. Sacrilege. Sacrilege. No shit. I, that I don't think we can I be friends anymore. I, I, have say, not, I also have not read any of Chris Philbrook's, Philbrook's books yet. It gets worse. I have, oh, however... God. <laughs> one of my one of the ones that I have read was uh, Meryl David. I've read and listened to. Oh my god, amazing! Um, yeah, Meryl David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Carl Meadows, his shoot off of the um, Adrian Undead Diaries or whatever. So it, it's a year totally out of the timeline. I yeah, I'm totally out of the time. <clears throat> However, I still liked Carl's books, so I know I'm gonna like the, or, you know Chris's books. Oh, and um, and for Carl, I'm gonna do this for him because he always accuses me of the uh, Mary Poppins thing whenever I try to do a British accent. I swear to God, you've got to know how awesome the freaking Loki versus the Apocalypse is. It's one of the greatest things of all time. That's the, Van Dyke, that's the, that's the Dick Van Dyke uh, chimney sweep. I'm embarrassed for you, Jack. That's what it is. You get one too. So, There's uh, one for you. Is that one for you? Then, um, I, I That's read it. Jeff uh, Thompson's Jack. books. That's Amazing. Uh, Jeff Thompson with his. I started reading um, the second one finally in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Guardians of the Apocalypse. Apocalypse. <laughs> sorry, Jeff is not a part of the MCU. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Guardians of the Apocalypse series. Um, and of course, Epic Mayhem. I have oh, yeah. to first read that one. Right um, there, I, right there, right there. Yes, I have absolutely loved all that. Um, James Dean, <laughs> as we all know, my favorite, you know, my my crush, my... Um, <laughs> Look at you get all blushy. See? I know, I get all girly. Is James in the audience? <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> I'm gonna. He doesn't even know me. I'm gonna mesh him right now. Oh yeah, I think he get does. in on this. Time to fuck with Jen. He's my. He's Jason my, will um, take the, the take the abuse for us. <laughs> Carl is back. Hi, Carl. Hey guys, come on. Any morning, I need to find a help. <laughs> yeah, oh, every time I, I love James's books. His books are amazing. I'm that's your hero. I'm in yep. love with his care. His main character, Dan. I, you know, if you've never that's me. If you're, a, <laughs> if you're a book person and you never have had a crush on a character, you're not really a book person. <laughs> yeah, but Tufo just ignores me. I get all sexy with him too. Yeah, yeah. that might be why. And you, might you have to. Oh, you, you have you have to you have to send him beer. He plays hard to get. Trust me. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, send him beer. <laughs> And hey, uh, Carl, since I'm handing them out so freely today, you get two for the price of one. <laughs> oh boy! So, so Jim, uh -oh. have you have you read any of the other books from uh, the written on Dead Oh my god! <laughs> There's just so many of them. I bet. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. So, what are we? Are you guys for? frozen? No, only Jack. Have you read any oh, yeah, other Jack books from frozen. the written on Dead Alpha? It's always have, awkward. Have any what? <laughs> Have you read any of the other books from the Written Undead authors? Um, oh, yeah, yours. I've read yours, which oh, I thought yeah. was really oh, okay. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I'm going to go through the list of everything I've read because I, forgot I have read about a lot. That. Courtney, um, <laughs> I've read yours. I almost mm -hmm. cried. Almost. I did not. You, But you almost got me. So okay. you're actually number one in, you know, the actual being able to make me cry off of a book. You almost got me. Still got the but, prequel. Uh, still got the Carter prequel. You got to get to that one. Yep. Still got the prequel. And that one, that one might break your knees. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, that might get you. I read yeah, Courtney well, me. too, and her books. Yeah. I really liked her books too. You know, so I've gone through a lot of the written undead universe people. Um, and I'm sure there's so many more that I'm missing. But I really, there's a lot of them that I really, really enjoy. And you have, there's so many. My to be read list has just gone from like, you know, four or five books to like, I don't have enough paper. There's yeah. Mm -hmm. paper. yeah. Mine, Mine too. So, it's like getting out of control, especially yep. whenever I pop into a podcast. I'm like, even if I'm just in the audience, I'm like, damn it. I have to write another one. The list just yeah. keeps going. Yeah. Question for yeah, you, Jen. Well, I'm sorry. Question for you, Jen. Uh, for those of us that are too lazy to read, are you going <laughs> to have yours recorded for audiobook anytime soon? Um, I have I have to um, look. <laughs> Jana loved your accent, Jack. <laughs> Thank you very much. I believe I bloody fucking awesome. Oh I think I'm pretty cool in this thing over here. Stop yeah. encouraging him. Oh, oh, my sexiness cannot be a bound. No, he said bloody fucking. It's, it's the same thing. But um, I, I do plan on getting the books done in in audio but i just i have to research it more i haven't researched it yeah, yeah. So i might I have to break down and read it when i get it then for now i'll, I'll be reading it for sure or mm -hmm. or you could be lazy and do that thing where um you actually can uh i know that there's a program that can read it for you oh yeah. that's horrible though that's not, not it's like a robot yeah, yeah, yeah it's horrible yeah, yeah it's like, like a, a voice robot. actor I like a good voice actor not just somebody narrating well, huh, i've I, heard if i do an audio book for jana my muse jana in the uk jana doing it because mm -hmm. she has every time i i write or wrote something that she she has said in the book i think of her voice because she's got the perfect perfect mix of she can do posh or she can do Liverpool. She can, you know, she can do ghetto or she can do, you know, very oh, crispy okay. English. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get started on that at some point, but I also have to talk to the publisher, which is Angry Eagle Publishing and find out how that's got going to work through them. So I have a workaround for you. Huh? I have a work. Uh, he says he, says he, he has, has a workaround. Around for you. <laughs> okay, you're back. Okay, y'all froze, and I'm just sitting here going, God, I could do anything right now. No, the yeah. workaround yeah. is yeah. Don't. Just, all we need to do is put you up on screen, and you could read the book to us. You don't want that. Yeah, I do. 
Yeah, we yeah, do. Would. We actually, we actually do. Yeah, I do. I yeah. Word, ben. See, hey, and then we can uh, all hey, jump in record, on the comments. My <laughs> ass was recently, I would. recently projected on a damn screen in uh, Prophetstown, Illinois. So, yeah, we can do that. We can make that happen. No. <laughs> yeah. If you guys had Jen read it, you'd get through one chapter before the shit storm started. I'm just maybe not even that. I I'd end up. Whoa. Oh, That's my son. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Oh, he, he just Vin, put you on blast, then. That's my son, Vincent Amato. And, uh, he just put you on blast. You know, yeah, he's, Jen, he's, you're, you're going to make well, us go to plan B, which is let Jack read it. <laughs> no, no girl, Jack, Jack is not bad, though. Email, I, I put, you did yeah, did no. you not just hear his little accent? No. I don't want to listen to Dick Van Dyke for two hours. <laughs> Oh, oh, my bloody God. We just found a can of beans over here. I'm going to put the beans in the basket, and then we're going to put them in the lorry, and then we're going to head down the street. This is why the UK said, fuck those guys on the poster for Patty. Let them let have that country. <laughs> yeah. These fucking blokes are fucking uh, stupid. Asian would, have, Asian would have been laughing right now. <laughs> He probably is somewhere in his sleep. He's picking up on all this nonsense. <laughs> well, moving ahead, yeah. Angel, freaking Ramon. Yeah. You are our lit RPG, our game lit expert. Break it down for us, brother. What are we missing oh. out on? What's out there well, that you love? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start. A little bit back in my youth, uh, I was a big, I'm a big, I was a big Resident Evil fanboy. That's when, you know, I kind of got into the horror genre playing the Resident Evil games, right? All Resident Evil 1, 2, you know, all, all the classic RE games. I, I, I played it until Resident Evil 4, and then it, and the series just died off for me. So then, you know, then, you know, later on, I, I said to myself, hey, you know what, I should try to write my own kind of series. So then, but so that, and then a friend of mine introduced me to uh, Little RPG, which is a uh, it combines video game mechanics with uh, with uh, literature. So, and one of my favorite books uh, I actually read pretty recently is uh, Pass of Power from Sean Barber. Nice. It's a post-apocalyptic uh, read. It basically it it's it's, it, it's not completely zombie, but it's horror. It's post-apocalyptic. The guy it, it, the guy's a truck driver. So uh, you know Jeff might it, it, you know Jeff may be able to win him a little more. It's a truck driver. I, I deal with them guys. Unload their trucks and watch them sleep in their cabs. <laughs> so yeah, basically this, this truck. Basically he's he's driving. He's, he's in this. Uh, I don't want to get too much away, but basically he's driving in this normal uh, route, and then and then he notices that the, that there's something wrong with the world, and then he, when he gets out, it's like a scene like the Nagonese, like everything is just empty, and then he just see starts to see goblins. You know, goblins and zombies, and he starts, and then he's got his his trusty, and the only thing he has is is his is a uh, his dog, as you can see here, yeah, that's his little dog mate. And oh yeah, I, 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 that's another thing I like about the book, the dog. And, and, and it's not a use to this dog. This dog actually attacks. This dog can actually fight. You know, one, you know, and what I like about it is he, he, the main character. He has to go around looking for stuff to craft. He has to make his own weapons. You know, his own. And then, and then at nighttime, he, he just sits and meditates, and, and, and you know, like in Eastern tradition, you know, you know, in far Eastern tradition, they do a lot of meditating, cultivation, you know. To now is he time. now is he of a uh, uh, Eastern descent, or is he just kind of a standard American? <laughs> no, he's a standard American. Huh. It's a standard, and that, that's the thing about the story. Even though it has Eastern traditions in it, my cultivation and and uh, meditation, it it combines, you know, this, you know, this this. this Takes place in in uh, Colorado, okay. you know. Takes place in, in the United States, you know. Really we're, we're well, really we're good book. And book two just came out on Monday, which I have on my Kindle. Which I gotta try to see if I can find time to read it. Although nice. he is gonna send me a, even though he is gonna send me a hardcover in exchange for one of my the hardcover of my new book. Does he nice. as well? So you know, it's a little trade off. So you know, he he he, he got he pre ordered my new book, so I got his you know. But you know, but he thought he likes history too. By the way, the, the author Sean Barber. So that, that's how he got to know me from my. So then I said, yeah, man, man. and then and then he, and then he's a new. He was a newer new RPG author. So I just gave him. I, I said, I'm gonna read your book, and man, it was some good stuff. Really good stuff. Sweet. Yeah. 
Well, we're going to make a rerun now going through again because we've talked about the books. Now we're going to talk about the movies. I'm going to start off right away because it's real easy for me. Jaws. To this day, Jaws. I'm, I'm, I, that's just my movie. Then we go Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, yada, yada, yada. But, man, give me Jaws 100% of the time. Agreed. Richard Ryan Rose, what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Well, I tell you what, um, I would say it still has to be Alien. Yep. Nice choice. Yeah. Very yeah. good call. Nice Very choice. Good. I mean, everything about that is it's such a freaking masterpiece. Everything about the movie is creepy and scary. Cause like, here's the thing about movies nowadays. They think creepy equals scary. No, it doesn't. <laughs> creepy is boring as fuck if it's not scary. Creepy and scary, good. Mm-hmm. Creepy... Not scary? Screw that. And it, it, that's where a lot of horror movies are now. It's just creepy, slow burn, pieces of shit, and then one minor thing happens at the end. Oh, there's a demon in the woods. Yeah. Woo, okay. <laughs> well, that's how you really feel, Richard. <laughs> no, that's that's yeah, the whole right. point of the show. That's how, get, get in there. Rah! I'm, I'm right there Aliens with Richard creepy on this. and scary. The yeah. alarm, the little keyboard sounds on the computer. Oh, my gosh. It, I mean, everything. Wait, how Everything's did that go just again? fucking scary as shit about Alien. I love it. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure I got that right. My keyboard ain't doing it, but Richard, we can talk about recordings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dungeon Dan, what is your favorite scary movie of all time? I can't give you a favorite. I, I love mm-hmm. a lot of movies for a lot of reasons. Um, I've been asked what's your favorite horror movie for so long. I, I've forgotten more horror movies than I can even remember. Um, bouncing off of what Richard was saying, you know, the film industry has changed a lot in what they're putting out. They're going Mm -hmm. for the PG 13 again, instead of going for the R rating. So the older horror fans are having a big problem with this. We're expecting a certain type of movie to be delivering what we're used to having. (laughs) I'm sorry, Jason, what was that? (laughs) (laughs) I I want to be in on your conversation. That's it. I'm just yeah. fucking with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you some movies that I do like. Um, Alien, Jaws, a lot of the older ones. I like a lot of the Italian ones, you know, the Giallos, uh, Suspiria, the original, not that fucking remake they put out. No, that remake was fucking terrible. It was terrible. You know, it cracked me up is Tarantino got to see it like months before anybody else, and he was like, it brought me to tears. It was so good. And I'm like, fucking Tarantino has lost his shit because that movie, high? Yeah. Yeah, it was horrible. I mean, uh-huh. th- when the chick got all twisted up, that was cool, but that goes right back to that one good scene in a two and a half hour movie type of deal. Good. The new titty. Good was good. Good. The, the what? New titty. I mean, the, the new titty was good in the movie. That's the only new, thing I liked about new it. Titty? New titty? New titty, yes. What is that? Naked women. New t- oh. Nudity. That's what I said. <laughs> new titty. <laughs> Mark it down this is the first time that Dungeon Dan has ever sat there slick jaw going, what the fuck? Somebody needs to back off the heroin. Is that a whistle? Jack? I'm so glad I wasn't being on the okay, What the hell did I miss? I was I, I was froze for a minute. What the hell? You yeah, I'm about it. to call I'm about to call Comcast to raise all kinds of hell. Yeah, and I hope they have a representative that sees this on TV so that they can. (laughs) That that was a whistleblowing moment. Uh, Do you like new Kennedy in movies there, Jack? (laughs) What the hell did I do? I don't even know what I did. I've I've just been sitting here like like this, like hanging out. I don't know what I did. I really hate technology. I very much. I'm stealing so, that one, Richard. <laughs> Nativity. Yeah. I guess I might. I'm guess I'm gonna have to go back. Oh, Landa Sandala or Sandala? Shit, I can't. Hi, I got, Landa. I, I ain't got reading glasses on. <laughs> Help me out, Landa. <laughs> That's gonna oh my right. god. <laughs> I like Jack. Mine. He's all frozen. Yeah, he is. Has yeah, he? Jack is just frozen. Have any of you watched Terrifier and Terrifier 2? I haven't seen Terrifier 2. I can't wait, though. Is it out on video? Can you stream it? It's, is it it's, I think it's streaming here very shortly. It's going to be on um, uh, this odd little 
new streaming show. I I had subscribed for like five days and bailed. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be available here pretty quick. I wasn't a big fan of the first one. I mean, I like I like that it was gory, but it was just to me it was like really senseless. I'm like, I need at least a little story. But people are going nuts about Terrifier too. Even even my buddy Kevin is like, Oh, you're gonna like it. I'm like, doubt it. <laughs> I like the first one. Yeah. And Art the Clown, he was in a different it was like an anthology movie prior to that. <clears throat> So was Terrifier he? is actually kind of a sequel to that, and I, I haven't I, seen the the first movie that Art the Clown was in, but Terrifier one was I, I enjoyed it. I haven't seen the second one yet. I, I guess it's just because it kept pulling out all the worst tropes. You know, the the hot chick that's got her boobs hanging out has a weapon, whacks them, and then ditches the weapon. I'm like, why wouldn't you hold on to that? <laughs> her boobs got in the way. Landa, you didn't make <laughs> too much new Timothy. <laughs> he has computer problems sometimes, so <laughs> he has other away. problems sometimes. And he has a lot of other. Yeah, that's <laughs> why we like him. Yeah. So I take it, Richard, you did not like Hereditary. No, no, I did not I, like Hereditary. I wasn't a fan okay. Of here's the thing. I, I struggled for it, and I, and I finally got to the end where the payoff was. I'm like, okay, that was all really great. I just didn't need to sit through that much. Uh, crap. You yeah. know, it was too boring. Um, and, and that's the new trend of movies. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at all this 2022 stuff coming out and I, I've picked out maybe a few that I liked and the rest were just horrible. That's where a lot of them are nowadays. Like I said, they're just going for the creepy, but they don't make it scary. Right. The millennials that are brand new to horror and pretty much anything they see for the first time, that's their introduction to horror. Oh, exactly. So why it might have been Jaws and The Exorcist for us, it's going to be, you know, hereditary and some other weird ones for them. The Blair Witch Project. No. There's nothing fucking scary about the Blair Witch Project. I don't yeah, care if no. what you say. And to be it's honest with you, stupid. the only reason I like that movie is because for a solid year, they had a fake website. That... Oh, you're back. Next yeah, time I'm not freeze. I'm, yeah. I'm stripping. I'm gonna be naked. Oh no, next, I, whatever it is. <laughs> Once we finish this show, um, y'all are gonna want to be flies on the wall for the phone call that goes out to Comcast because there's <laughs> no excuse for this. None. <laughs> this this is your horror movie, right? Oh, here. I'm about the Comcast to go killer. That shit crazy on them. <laughs> All right, who's next? <laughs> All right, well, let's start off with the C. Let's get Jason in here. He's Actor, just back there making... can't do much with badly written script. But True. now, um, my big thing is, what makes you love horror the way you do? I mean, this is for all of you. So let's start with, uh, we'll brought him up, ding dong, Jason. What makes you love horror so much? <laughs> yes, yes, ding dong. That's true. Oh, honestly, it goes back with like, okay, my favorites were, and I don't have the exact favorite, but like Alien. I like the sci fi horror shit. But it's the atmosphere. It's like the setup, the weird noises, the music, the bad guy or whatever you can't see, that kind of shit. That's what made it my favorite. That's what gets me into it, where I really don't entirely know what's killing everybody off or whatever's going on. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the, those horror movies. You so the big reveal, half, you're waiting yeah. on that big reveal. Like you know? half, three quarter of the movie. You have no idea, but maybe you like know, a shape. Or, you might just see its face. Yeah. You have no idea like this thing. Well, in that case, sharp tail and what acid blood, the, all that shit Ooh, going on. Acid and it's, it's blood. I like, I like that. You know, the, the strobe lights are going off. You got the weird alarm. Right. Yee, 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 yee. Then, then you're know, just looking around the corner like, holy fucking shit, there's the alien. <laughs> right. you know? And it's, it's, it's the whole thing. If it's not doing all of that, it's hard for me to like get into. I, it just, I don't like it where it's, you know what's going on. From the point, and it, well, it's creepy or scary. I like it when it's both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer the group. Is there anything that's come out recently, let's say within the past, I don't know, five years, that is legitimately scary and creepy? That's an unfair question because I don't find much anything scary. No, I ain't scared of nothing. It's, it's really just what the, you know, if the story was good for me. And there have been a few, and I'm trying to think of what they are. 
it'll take when, a while, so you can move on to somebody else. Well, if you well want now to in later. Uh, one of my favorite things that came out, you know, I, I guess it came out in the last five years. Maybe it was longer. I just lost track of time, and I don't give a damn what y'all think. I loved Sharknado. Fucking <laughs> asshole. I, Freaking, yeah, bite me. Wait, which Dungeon one? Dan. Which one? All you of care. Them. All, of all, them. all 10 of I, them. Literally, as they would First. drop, and I knew, oh, oh tonight, the new episode's coming out. I'm there. I'm like, literally, I have got popcorn. I got my Coke. I am ready to go. Let's <laughs> do this. Like, I love me some Sharknado because they're so stupid and over the top. They're not meant to be taken seriously. And if you did take them seriously, well, then you were the idiot. Not me. Not me. You took it seriously. You're not supposed to take it seriously. It's supposed to be fun. And all the cameos and the stars that, like, put themselves out there to be in them. Oh, my God. Sharknado is just fantastic. So, yeah, that's one of the, you know, things I like. Hey, well, speaking of off- the the cuff like weird things that everybody else don't like but you do like what are some of the uh movies and books that you guys liked that nobody else did I uh, I've got one hey here we go thanks killing <laughs> <laughs> no I liked thanks killing that was intentionally made that way I liked it oh it's so horrible it was great I loved it the second one was just it wasn't even horrible enough to be great the, I mean, the thanks, thanks, killing three. Was, yeah, well, they yeah, fucking they changed ridiculous. out the the turkey puppet. I think that's what it was for me. The first one was so poorly made; it was just added to it. Yeah. How about the only only part about thanks, killing three? I like. I, I'm just. I'm listening. It's where, it's where, it's where the turkey replaces his. Nobody's fucking with. <laughs> Nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> That's right. I'm <laughs> rude of you. you guys. <coughs> I'm just laughing. There's one for all of you. <laughs> God, <it's> awesome. <laughs> but no, between my legs, what I was trying to say was <laughs> they used a puppet, like a puppet. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. You I'm haven't seen it? Seen it. No, I've got to see it now. I've got oh, to see dude. it now. Yeah. Okay. Find it on uh-huh. YouTube. Those are, they're up on YouTube. You can watch the whole movie. If you <laughs> really just want to sit there at the end going, I can't believe I wasted that much time in my life, but it was fun. <laughs> Might be good with a little wacky backy if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'd have I'd have I'd have no idea what you were saying. Um, a couple of our watchers, Meryl David said smile was good. I haven't seen that yet. I, I like haven't it. either. Did I you, would like to. That's oh, newer. Did you catch that, though? Their ad campaign for that was fucking genius. If you go back in, like, over the year previous, they were people at, like, Good Morning America and a few other things grinning like they do in the movies behind cameras and all, throughout the year. That's just creepy. I caught on to it much later, and I was like, what is going on? Why are people just being weird? I thought it was some kind of TikTok trend or some BS. <laughs> well, and then Landa said, autopsy of Jane Doe scared me. I didn't <laughs> That, one. that wasn't a bad movie. I like that movie. <laughs> it, was, it was a good movie. Yeah, it was, it was, that was a good movie. Movie. Yeah. I, I hadn't think, seen it. I think really the only movie that scared the crap out of me and still to this day does is Jaws. I have a problem with getting in the water to the bottom where I cannot see. Yep, 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 yep. What she just and said. It, and yeah. the other one is Salem's Lot. Yep. It's no. all because of that stupid it. little kid. It's that stupid little kid. Oh, the one floating. But I actually like the dude Let in the, in the chair in. with his eyes glowing. Yeah. That was even better. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the Nosferatu yeah. looking yeah. dude. Anything with a kid. Yeah. yeah, the main guy. Yeah, yeah. Creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't like anything with the children. Anything with the children being creepy. I don't like that. You know, like uh, sh- the Shining with the with the kids, the red rum. You know, all that stuff. I. The twins that are standing in the hallway. I'm good on all that. I, Samara I, from the ring. Children of the corn. With yeah. The hair all down. Yes. Well, oh, I, I, I was in. I was teach. I was a leader in Girl Scouts when my girls were in fourth grade, and one of the girls did that, and she went as the ring for Samara from the ring at, for um, Halloween, and she walked on the floor just <laughs> oh, like. Oh God. I was like, Stop it. Oh. <laughs> 
I'll give I you whatever been, badge you want. Just stop. <laughs> I, actually, I would have been freaked. That or if she did the the whole the grudge one, you know, where the uh, head twisting. Ah. Yeah. Well, since he's, not, since he's not here right now, I'm going to speak for Jeff and say <laughs> he would have asked you the question of, you didn't punt her across the stage? No. <laughs> I would have gotten in trouble. I knew she was a real girl, but if, if I saw that coming at me in the dark, I might have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You're not supposed to be here, little girl. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, another movie that people don't like, but me and Jack do, and I like all five, Phantasm. Yeah. Phantasm. Oh, yeah. Yes. I love yes, the Phantasm, yes. uh, Phantasm series. The really? freaking spears with the blades and the drill yeah. and the yeah. Drill and the, the tall out. man. Yeah. The tall man. Yeah. And the yeah. It's not over, boy. Good game, boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack? I'll tell you, I'll tell you good, it's not a movie. Did you hear Bantos? Banjo. It's not a movie, but it's a, it's a horror Jack story that I'm living right now. It's called Escape from Texas. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 a big one. Escape In fact, you know what we're doing is we'll just do this shit live on. Uh, we'll just do this live on the show. How's the uh, possibilities of that sale going here today, my brother? Well, I've got a showing here in less than an hour, so I'm gonna have to jump off and and uh scrub my toilet and stuff so well, yeah. a, i wonder why <laughs> what happened there nice way to yeah anal leakage that's a good segue you got to this conversation Time in. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, it's great being on the show i'm sorry i'm having to cut and run but uh yeah i gotta get this house sold and so i can get the fuck on out of texas get back yeah, well, to hell, here we'll, state well, by the way, I mean, we're only eight minutes away from wrapping this thing up anyway before me, Jen, and Dan uh, have to go back to our padded room. <laughs> but in the meantime, while we're free and loose and out here in the world, let's just go ahead and wrap this thing up real quick. Richard Ryan Rose, where can everybody find your fucking glorious books? <laughs> well, you can find my else. fucking glorious books on Amazon <laughs> and Goodreads and uh, Audible and iTunes. And uh, you'll probably see me at an event one of these days, but it's not going to be. It's going to be for a while. Probably the next one will be the Bigfoot Festival in uh, Townsend, <laughs> Tennessee. So. And a comment from Landa, who let y'all out. Who let y'all out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll let us We're not snitches. <laughs> well, hey, uh, the only way you can follow up that comment is with a simple. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, Jesus. Yep. Oh, oh my God. God. That was disturbing. <laughs> I've never seen that. Good. Shut <laughs> up. We're going to unsee it either. All right. So, Dan, where can everybody find you, you sexy bearded beast? You can find me at the <laughs> Real Nine Horror Group and the Padded Room. Fantastic. Jason Aston, you other sexy goateed beast. Where can we find you? <laughs> oh, yeah, it is, I guess. Yeah, uh, I guess, I guess. I go to the double chin. I'm trying to hide it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's know, working. I hate these people, by the way. Room. I'm in the padded room with the rest of these fucking weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll grow all right. You can pull on it, Jack, all right? <laughs> all right, fine. Fine. I gave Bye. you a chance, you asshole. Go over there, sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Amato, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on my website, Jennamato Author dot or Author dot net. I wish I remembered where I was. Um, I'm like I have to have business cards to remind me of who I am and where I work so that I return there. So you know, I'm just saying. Um, you also can find me on Facebook at Jenna Motto Author on Facebook. Um, you can find me here on The Written and Dead and on The Padded Room, you lucky people. Boy, you get around, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, she's <laughs> slanging it like I'm slanging it. We got a team thing going on over here. You know? Can't keep this all, all the sexy to myself. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, why would you, girl? <laughs> uh, when I first met her and got her on the Written and Dead podcast, she, all, she already had this plan about her OnlyFans page. I said, man, screw that. Come with me. I can get you spread everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could share your sexiness with everyone. 
can yeah. be hot for only fans. It's a good thing. So many things. <laughs> yeah, I, I well to close this wonderful, crazy, insane, awesome first half of apparently what is the padded room as it turns out this week. Angel Ramon. Yes, take sir. us home, my brother. I am taking you home, my brother. My and I am not your brother, I'm your niece. Remember that. My bad. <laughs> hmm. Yep, what was there that you again? go. Foot, foot down. That's my lead. That's my lead. <laughs> Can't my act bad. on grounds of equality, oh, man. Over my bad. Over him. Over him. Yep, yep. <laughs> now, anyway, where you can find the king, the emperor. I'm, I'm just playing, by the way. But <laughs> no, you can find this. Yeah, you can find me on Amazon, Angel Ramon, for my Harvard stuff, or Angelus Maximus for my historical fiction stuff. You can find me on the Witten Undead as well and on the Witten Undead podcast every Saturday. And you can find me on the Nietzsche's Adventures Maximus group where Dungeon Dan will educate you on anal leakage. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Damn it. Oh boy. How did I ever come to this? You started it's it. It's, it's, yeah, I'm that's probably it. it. You got anal leakage spread. It's contagious. It's, it's dripping. <laughs> You don't even oh, make one Danny comment did. on the show. I'm just finishing it. No, <laughs> it's really never going to be finished. It's no. never going to be finished. It's always a slow trip. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I, no, I, no, but seriously, folks, I, it's going to be this going to be a post where Dungeon Dad's going to share his knowledge of anal leakage, shooting a bow <laughs> while taking a <laughs> number two, and all that good stuff. And I'll, I'll get Aiden, and I'll get Aiden to jump on in as well. We got to do a panel about <laughs> that dungeon. I, what do you say? Absolutely. <laughs> let's do it. Got to bring my other buddies in too. I don't actually do this alone. You know, Jack and Jeff and Jen, and especially Jason who hides. They all yeah, add to I, this. <laughs> hey, I, look. Okay, let's. I'm going to just clear the air right now. I'm not hiding, but you got to put the actual author on display first. And Jack, oh, Jack and popped out. Yeah, yeah, I popped oh, out just for a second. No, I had to get away from this for a minute, so I actually froze the shit on my own. I'm like, no, nope, oh. let me out of here because this thing's going crazy. Hey, Jack, look who's on, look who's on the feed. Aiden, it says, I'll be there. Oh, <laughs> boy, it just gets nuttier by the minute. Well, you know what, guys? For Angel Ramon and his cohort, his freaking text crasher over here, Aiden Collier, <laughs> Richard Ryan Rose, Jennifer Amato, my man, who I love. Uh-oh. Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah, we're assuming. Now we don't know who his <laughs> man is. Well, we're Damn talking it. about Richard, but you never know. <laughs> no, I already mentioned my name. So. Probably going to be um, it's either, it's gonna... Dude, no, seriously. Around? How far did I make it? How far did I make uh, it? You said look. Yeah, well, you, you put it right out of right. cliffhanger. All right, good. Here's your cliffhanger for Angel Ramon, for Richard Ryan Rose, for Jennifer Amato, and for the man I love to hate the most in the entire world, Dungeon Dan <laughs> Ubell. <laughs> I am Jack Childress. This has been the Written Undead podcast. And in some ungodly way, we will see you next week. Peace out. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Later, guys. Thank <laughs> you.